as you know, the 93rd Annual Academy Awards Ceremony takes place on Sunday, and it's a time when Hollywood crowns the best films and performances of the past year. So let's get a preview from ABC News contributor and Sirius XM host Mike Muse. Mike, so great to see you again. Hey, it's so great to see you, Kara. Great to be in conversation with you. Well, I'll tell you what, if you don't mind, let's just back up for a moment, okay, and go back to 2015 and the Oscars at that time, when all of the acting nominees, as you remember, in major categories were white, lily white. <laughs> it's been six years now since the Academy pledged to diversify. So what do you think? Has it? It actually has. I just want to shout out uh, my good friend April Rain for creating that campaign, Oscar So White. Uh, what we saw was, and really what we're seeing this year, is a result of what took place in response to that. Uh, the Oscars changed the system from within. Uh, they really worked hard to really focus on the different categories of membership uh, and to making sure that membership was younger uh, was and was more diverse and was more inclusive. And so I think over time, they've been steady adding and recruiting new members that is more reflective of our society. And as a result, you're seeing not only different types of films Kara nominated, but also different types of actors that are nominated as well. And the proof is in the pudding for this year, particularly that supporting actor category, where you have three black male actors vying for that number one slot. Well, let's talk about those actors uh, in a minute. But due to the pandemic, as you know, small groups of nominees and presenters will now be gathering in three cities to actually hand out the awards. And there will also be a smaller red carpet. So with viewership taking pretty much of a deep dive, right, for the other award shows, what do you think? Will Hollywood's most glamorous night be a thing of the past? No, I don't think so. I, I think this year is just an outlier. You know, obviously, I think you're going to see a decrease in viewership as well as the other award shows. But what's interesting about this one is I don't think a lot of people have had the chance to see the films. And so because a lot of people haven't had a chance to see the films, I don't know if they will tune in to watch. But that doesn't mean that the films weren't good. It's just that consumer behavior dynamics are changing. Uh, consumers and film goers and movie watchers, we had so much other content to view uh, with broadcast, linear and streaming and film, it was hard to really find where these films are being released. Some did limited theatrical releases so they can qualify for the awards, um, and then some went straight to streaming. But it was hard to figure out which one was going where and when. Uh, there was no uniformity. So it made it hard for consumers and moviegoers to follow uh, this year's releases. Well, let's talk about that. Let's follow up on that. You know, with regard to the nominated movies, right, with most of the theaters closed due to the pandemic and the changes you saw, many studios opted to postpone their major releases, as you mentioned, last year until later this year or even next year. So have audiences really seen, Mike, what could be called the best films of the season? Kira, man, you always ask some really great questions. <laughs> I say yes. You teed me up. That's why. I say yes. The, yeah, right? Uh, these films are fantastic. And I think, Kira, due to the pandemic, due to the fact that we are at home, you saw more viewers able to see different types of films. Usually for theatrical releases, it's very limited to how many movies a theater can show per day and per screen. And also, two studios began to cherry pick on what they think uh, is the best films released during certain time periods. But with the streaming option, it allowed for new audiences to see different films while we were sitting at home that would otherwise the movie studios might not have promoted that well and or the audience and film goers might have self-selected at the movie theaters. So because of these streaming platforms, it allowed a new space, a new opportunity, and really more diverse storytelling uh, and diverse, t diverse types of films. Okay, well, let's get, let's get down to it. The award shows leading up to the Oscars have honored a variety of films and performances so far. So tell us who you think the front runners are in the top categories and any surprises maybe we should watch out for. Yeah, well, let's just start with what everyone is going to be waiting for is the best film category. What I love about the best film category is that, to me, it's truly reflective of the social constructs that we're seeing in America, from race to class to disabilities. We've never seen disabilities really at the forefront uh, as a main character and as a lead narrative of a story. And that's, of course, at The Sound of Metal, which was fantastic. We see Nomadland really talking about the invisible workforce of the nomads across the country. And I got to be honest with you, Kira, I didn't know anything about that. that 
culture and that movement and that class of people until I watched Nomadland. And then you have Minari. What a talented group of actors who really express so much empathy in the story of this Korean multi-generational family having to deal with maintaining their own culture while also, too, trying to live in this rural community of Arkansas. And then, of course, Judas and the Messiah and the trial of the Chicago 7. What we saw, Kira, is the Black Panther Party put into a different perspective. The Black Panther Party has always been viewed and skewed within the media as this negative, bad people. But with these two movies in conversation with each other, showed the breadth of the Black Panther Party, showed the scope and the Constitution and what was a fundamental cause and heartbeat of the organization. Now, with that being said, and of course, I can't say anything without saying a promising young woman, really taking vigilantes to a whole different level in the backdrop of the Me Too movement with women owning their bodies, owning their identity, and owning their ability to say yes and or no. Uh, but I really think this is Nomad Land's year. Although I'm rooting for Judas and the Black Messiah, I do believe Nomad will take it home because the Academy has signaled they love Chloe Zhao. Uh, she is nominated for Best Editor, uh, Best Director. She's a nomination for Best Screenplay. And then with Best Film, I think this is going to be her night as well as Nomad Land's night. Well, I'm with you. With regard to race, culture, diversity, these are the movies to watch. But I have to throw in a fun one. We haven't seen it yet. I can't wait for Top Gun 2. Come on, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's the military Listen. in me. That is like, you know, flying the <laughs> F-18s, the, the old Tomcat. I can't wait for Top Gun 2. <laughs> And what a great July 4th release. Hopefully they release it on July 4th. And of course, we need Tom Cruise to host the premiere. Uh, that would be fun. Exactly. <laughs> All right. We are naming this Oscar So Colorful. Okay. No more Oscar, Oscar Ooh, So White. I like that. You like it? All right. There you I go. I love that. We'll I like our, that a we'll lot. We'll put our names on it. But then the it. next year, we have to do Oscar So Patriotic. Okay. Uh. All right. I like it. Well, I'm wearing red. I just need a little, little white and blue. We're ready to go. Mike, it was so great seeing you. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Kira. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.